This is modern homesteading. Now this is a brush axe. There's nothing cooler than a Mackinac Cruiser. A few weeks ago I mentioned in a video that I was uh, keeping my eye open for a, um, a proper brush hook like the one you see before you. And lo and behold, this fine tool came into my hands today, courtesy of my new friend and subscriber, Jem Dillon. Uh, Jem is started a kind of a little small business and he's collecting antique tools, axes primarily, and refurbishing them, putting nice edges, putting nice handles on them, and reselling them on eBay. And um, he is uh, doing a really nice job with those. Anyway, he contacted me a couple weeks back and said, hey, if you haven't found one of those brush hooks yet, I'd like to keep my eye open for one. I don't have one now, uh, but um, if I come across one, I'd like to put it together for you and restore it and send it to you as a thank you, as a gift. And it, here it is. It came, came today. And I have to say that uh, this is beautiful. I am so appreciative of this gem. It's just absolutely wonderful. And what a nice job you did on it. Just the restoration, because this is an old one. You can see from the hardware it is. Kelly Works, True Temper. You put a nice handle in there. Nice job, got it all wedged in there. Very petite little Fawn's foot. It's a nice small little handle, but a beautiful little tool. So I want to share with you here, this is always something that I've been wanting to get my hands on. This is one of the approved tools of the US Forest Service hand crew and, you know and I have gotten a, I have a copy here of their very hard to get manual detailing all the different tools that they have and you can see here uh, the different types of brush hooks so we have a Burke blade which is this style here which is sharpened on both edges I've never seen one of those before and then we have the more traditional brush hook like the one here that uh, Jim restored for me and just a little bit of information about them and some of the different manufacturers and how to sharpen them. You have a couple different types. You see you have the type with the, the strap, like this one here, the extra security strap, and, and there's one here by Council Tool. And this is, of course, this is the True Temper, which is what we're looking at right here. And then there are a couple of the versions that don't have the strap, maybe a little bit lighter duty. But uh, what, a, what a neat tool. This came to me so sharp, I'm gonna demonstrate here to you. So as you can see, it is very sharp. So uh, enough chitter chatter. Let's take this outside and try it out, see how it works. And then I'll kind of talk a little bit more about it, use, explain what it's for and, and why you would want one of these. So having never used a brush axe before, I really wasn't sure what to expect, but I had a pretty good idea what its function is. You know, what, what it seems to me, it's kind of a bridge between an axe and let's say a sigh or maybe a light machete for brush that uh, is too springy or just too small to deal with with an axe but maybe a little bit too thick or too woody to deal with, with with a sigh or some type of a swinging tool. So it seems to me that you can cut down some uh, smaller trees, three, four inch in diameter, uh, certainly less efficient than an axe, but where it really comes through nice is on the stuff that's about an inch to an inch and a half. So I've got a little piece of cherry right here I'll show you and we'll just kind of demonstrate some of the bigger and larger things and take a look at its capability. So right here is a piece of wild cherry. It's probably about an inch and a half in diameter, inch and a quarter. We'll put a few chops on this and see how it cuts. I know, I know. You don't want to look through raindrops, though. First impressions. Not a tool for women or children. A tool that takes a, a tremendous amount of upper body strength. It's very heavy. I'd say probably four and a half pounds. So it's like swinging a double-bitted axe. If you 
tire out easily or can't swing a double bitted axe or don't have the strength, then I probably wouldn't recommend something like this. But it has the feel and heft of a true axe. So I think it is true to its name. I think it could be used as an impromptu axe. So right behind me here, I've got about a four inch uh, fir sapling and we'll uh, try it on that and see how it compares to an axe. I'm a little bit surprised by that, how effective it is at an axe. One thing I notice where it really falls down is when the, the brush or the material, whatever it is you're using, has a lot of spring to it, a lot of movement. Uh, it's not very effective for that. And it's definitely more effective for the softer woods, uh, even things that are softer than pine. Um, I don't know how effective it would be in hardwood. I think this is probably a west coast tool. But what an effective chopper it is. I think what it is, that curved blade, you know, has just been refined from centuries of warfare and, and used as a tool. I think like it's kind of that kukri style shape or reverse kukri style shape is just such an effective cutter because there's so much cutting edge. It comes in contact with the material, but uh, I'm surprised how deep it bit. So, and also how easy it was to use because it didn't take very much precision. You know, your axe on a small tree like that, you have such a small area that you can actually, or you need to come in contact with, where this, uh, you know, it just gives you so much more liberty. So, my final take, what my take be on this, would this be a primary tool uh, for forestry work? Uh, is this something that I would grab if I was going to go out and I had to clear brush and sticks? I don't think so. Uh, but I, what I could see it as is a really good supplemental tool, where if you had a crew, um, you know, like a, a wildland firefighting crew or a hand crew where you're in really woody, brushy stuff, this would be a good supplemental tool uh, that just bridges that gap between axes and size. But a beautiful tool nonetheless. I'm going to, i, I got to spend more time with it. You know, the thing is with these things that oftentimes your initial impressions are wrong because you just don't know how to use them. Uh, you know, I just give the, I can give an example like a typewriter. If you had been used to writing letters your entire life and someone sat down a typewriter in front of you and you didn't know how to type, you didn't have the keys memorized and you had to, t had to use it as a production tool, after a couple minutes you would get very frustrated, you would throw it in the bin and you would go back to your handwriting. But uh, given time and practice and understanding how it works and how to use it proficiently, then of course it would far exceed your, you could increase your productivity. And that very well could be the case with a tool like this. Um, as you increase in strength and technique, certainly. But uh, it's a difficult tool to use. It would be a dangerous tool to use. The Forest Service recommends that you wear shin protection, and I don't doubt it, uh, because this, uh, boy, this would uh, remove foot, your foot from your leg uh, rapidly. So while I'm down here, would you like to see what I did yesterday? So this is before. Too many trees, sickly trees, down trees, and after. Openness, happy trees, trees with room to grow. Order, not a chaos. No doubt the question's going to come up in this video. It's going to go something like this. Hey Cody, is that a Filson Mackinac wool cruiser that you're wearing? The answer is yes, and I can guarantee you there'll be a full review very soon.
like a bug in a rug with this new coat on. There's nothing cooler than a Mackinac cruiser.